big smile on my face because I'm interviewing Matt Letizia. It is Wednesday, the 11th of May, 2022. And I don't do these interviews very often, Matt, but this is very important to me. We really do need to talk about this. We need to talk uh-huh. about the media. And we need to talk about how long I've been in, in, in touch with you. And now you're speaking out about what really happens. Because I, <laughs> you know, I remember messaging you back early days. Very early days. Very April early days. 2020, April. what was going on with Sky? And I thought, I wanted to, I wanted the story. I'm a journalist. I wanted the exclusive. I saw what Sky did. I also know people who live close to uh, Sky presenters who uh, knew exactly what was going on. And uh, you never stop, my friend. And I'm going to call you my friend. But I, I think it's very important when you do these interviews People are called a guest. Um, but to, for me, you are incredibly brave. And I saw an article in The Sun about you a couple of days ago. And one of the last quotes from you is, I will never stop. Because uh, this is so important. That's what it you said. Important. It is. You said, you know, I just thought, that, that fired me up. And it, in a way, I've kind of stopped doing these interviews, Matt. But when I saw that, I thought, he's inspiring me. Uh, he's inspiring me to continue to talk about these important issues and it important isn't even the right word Matt it's it's Mm. crucially it is it is it is our future it is it is for our children you know whatever the sacrifice or suffering we have this is for our children absolutely it's life-changing you um so many people are so excited about this interview Matt and I um I hope I can do it justice because we have been in touch for a very long time, but this is the first time I've spoken to you on a Zoom call. Um, <laughs> and I've been chatting to your wife and you've been through so much. Is, um, was it worth it? Is it, wor- is it worth it? How, how have you been today, the last few days? Has it, has it been worth it? Uh, to be honest with you, Anna, it's, um, it's probably, uh, I'd say it probably affected the people around me than it's actually, more than it's affected me. Um, quite frankly. Uh, I've had uh, many, many years of, you know, being in the public eye. Um, I had a career where criticism um, came with the territory. Uh, you, had a, you had a bad game in football and uh, all of a sudden all the, the journalists, the sports journalists were on your case telling you how bad you were and you know, how disinterested you looked and uh, you don't care and you don't try. Uh, so I've been through all that nonsense before. Uh, I spent 16 years as a professional footballer having to put up with that nonsense. Um, and it stood me in good stead for what I've had to put up with uh, over the last couple of years. Um, so quite frankly, uh, having various people in the media uh, attack me for my views um, has had very little effect on me. Um, it's had very little effect uh, on my mental strength. Um, and that's why I will say I will always continue to to speak out um, on the issues that I think are important um, and to not be bullied into silence um, because uh, I, I don't I don't bow down to bullies. Well, let's talk about. So I, I spoke to my neighbour who's a big football fan. He's 89. I said, do you know Matt Letizia? And he said, yeah, he's an amazing footballer. But he's, he, he, took, he became a big um, personality on Sky. Um, so you 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 made that uh, transition, didn't you, from footballer to commentator personality? Um, obviously, you were able because there are there are many footballers that can't do that, but you did very successfully, and you were very popular. So tell me what life was like before uh, March twenty twenty. What was life like for you? <laughs> um, uh, life was very calm, uh, actually. Um, was was plodding along uh, quite nicely. I had a, a, a nice job that I enjoyed very much. Um, it allowed me a lot of free time. Um, so I had time to spend with my family. I had time to do my other great passion in life, which is now golf. Um, sport has always been a massive uh, part of my life uh, and will always continue to be a massive part of my life. Um, and I've kind of, I, I get my competitive kicks out of playing golf now instead of playing football. Um, and yeah, life was, life was kind of, kind of bumbling along quite nicely. I was able to, you know, uh, have time to do all the things I wanted to do with my life. Um, and then that all changed. Um, so you were, you were, um, your job on was mainly Sky, was it? Working for Sky yeah. Sports? 
Yeah, so I was working for Sky Sports, which which normally entailed, I don't know, maybe yeah, five, six, seven days a month. Um, uh, and then uh, on top of that, I was doing a, a little bit of after dinner speaking. So I do a, the occasional after dinner speech. Um, uh, and that was that was kind of it, really. That was my working life. Um, and other bits and pieces kind of cropped up. I do a lot of uh, a, a lot of things for um, I'm a, a, an ambassador and a, a patron for quite a few charities down here. Um, so I like to to try and uh, help out those guys as and when I can, when when time permits. Um, I was also ambassador at, at Southampton Football Club, so I was doing a, a little bit of work for them. Nothing nothing much to be honest. Uh, truth be told, um, I wasn't on the payroll of Southampton Football Club, uh, uh, and so that was kind of. That was kind of what I was doing, really. I was just playing. You, life. we had lockdown, and you had a Twitter account. I did, and I decided to uh, use my Twitter account to uh, to question some of the things that were going on. Um, and I just wasn't. I wasn't happy. I wasn't. I, I didn't trust what I was seeing from our government and from our uh, so-called experts um, who. Uh, refused to uh, tell everybody what their conflicts of interest were before they were um, giving us their statements on what we should and what we shouldn't do with our lives. You you weren't alone. There was obviously a WhatsApp group that I belonged to with many celebrities and personalities with huge followings who felt the same way you did. And Mm -hmm. you'd get a little tiny little tease from what they were thinking, but then their agents would go, shut up! (laughs) Um, You, did you have an agent? Did you have someone telling you, Please be quiet, Matt. <laughs> you're never going to work again. Um, not really, actually. I, I mean, I, I, I did have an agent, um, but they didn't really get involved. Um, quite frankly, I think there was once when, you know, I, there was uh, a, a tweet um, which mentioned Anne Frank, um, which kind of got a, quite a bit of attention. Uh, and I had a phone call from my agent saying, uh, I'm not sure that's really appropriate. Do you think you should take that down? Um, so uh, I uh, gave that due consideration um, uh, and uh, deleted uh, that tweet at the time. Um, but apart from that, no, my, he didn't kind of say, you know, shut up, don't speak out or anything like that. So they, we, they didn't. Can we, can we have an honest conversation here? Because back in March, April, okay, May, June, July 2020, there were some very, very high profile people, weren't there, speaking out. And I think they did think, I'm going to lose, going to lose my career. I'm going to lose my income. Um, and then there were people that just just said, sod it, like you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were, weren't there? And we can't say who they are. No. We can't say uh, who they are, but they were pretty big, pretty big. No, no. There were some big names, yes, um, and they decided to, to go down the path that they chose. And um, I don't have, um, uh, I don't have any opinions on on what they decided to do because it's their life, and they have to make the choices in their life. Um, and I, I, I don't know their situation um, in terms of you know finances, all that kind of stuff. So you never know what's really going on behind closed doors. Um, so I don't like to to judge other people. Uh, but I, I made the decision to to keep talking out, uh, to keep speaking out about it, and to keep questioning what was going on. Can I can I ask you then? You know, when you lost your job at Sky, yeah, um, early days, I wanted to talk to you about it, and you said I can't at the moment, but you have spoken out more recently, and I know you. Um, I was really upset about it, and I continue to be upset about the same things that are that are still happening now where brave people say brave things from a place of courage and compassion and then they lose their income. Um, Why didn't you speak out about what Sky did to you then? Why are you doing that now? Um, I uh, would, well, as you know, when, um, uh, when these things happen, um, certain things are signed. when you do that to make sure that you get the money that you're owed. Um, and so I was un, uh, under a non-disclosure agreement. Um, and so there were certain things that I wasn't allowed to talk about. 
So and I'm, I'm you did go and do, and, and I remember and seeing you and um doing uh, an advert. Is it Paddy Power? Yes. Um, how did you feel about losing that job at Sky and then doing an advert for Paddy Power? Um, how did I feel about losing the job at Sky? Uh, obviously, I was disappointed because it was a job that I loved, and I, I got to spend nearly every Saturday, Saturday afternoon with my mates, um, and we had a, we had a great time. It was it was didn't feel like a job. Uh, it just felt like I was getting paid for doing something that I loved, which is kind of what I've done my whole life. Really, I've been very very lucky uh, in my life that you know I've been paid for doing stuff that I enjoy doing, um, and I've always been uh, very very grateful for that. And uh, and I've always uh, I've always tried as well in in all that time to try and help uh, people that are uh, not quite as fortunate as I've been um, and, and so doing the the Paddy Power stuff was actually very it was very much my sense of humor uh, the the Paddy Power stuff it was poking it was poking fun at all the right people um, but very tongue-in-cheek and not taking not taking ourselves too seriously uh, and it kind of just sat pretty well, um, you know. And you know, I had to also, I had to make a living. You know, I've now, I've now uh, not got a regular income, uh, and so um, I, I also had to take into consideration the, the financial aspects of it. Before all of this, I was exactly the same as you. I, I, I was doing um, these courses all around the country, and I couldn't believe I was being paid for something that I loved. And now both of us in 2022 are in this very strange position where we've literally um, put all of our energy and compassion and courage behind the right thing. And we're being criticized for it. Um, it, it it's, it's, it's upset me to hear that you were um, doing something you really loved that you really enjoyed, that didn't even feel like work, and also helping people, which was exactly the same position I was in. And then you spoke out for the things that mattered in terms of the suffering. Um, so a lot of people don't want to go back there. Why did you feel, why did you feel you should speak out? Because there was... Because my, my instinct and my common sense told me that the, uh, the measures that they were putting in place... Um, we're going to be far more detrimental to our society uh, than any benefit that you could have got from the measures that they did with lockdowns and face masks and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, I'm not an expert. I've never, I've never claimed to be an expert on any of this stuff, um, but I've got common sense and I've got, I've got brains. I can, I can read literature um, and it, did, it just didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. Well, uh, what I would say is we had we had this lockdown phase, okay, before before the mask mandation came in, before any discussion about the vaccine, and we had a yeah. number of celebrities, didn't we? We had Kirsty Olsop, Denise Walsh, um, a number of of, of uh, Richard Madeley, is that? And then they, they they just tailed off. So, do you feel that you should have maybe tailed off when they the vaccine came in? You know, the vaccines nope. come along. No, why didn't no, you just I tail off? I didn't want to tail off. Um, I have no intention of tailing off. I, I, I just uh, saw the country going in a very bad direction. Um, I didn't didn't like the direction the country was going in um, when they started talking about mandatory vaccinations of uh, of a vaccine that was still in its trial phase. Didn't make any sense to me. That, well, uh, we're, we're we're moving though because there was a lockdown period and then there was choice, wasn't there? And then I think maybe a year later. Well, no, there was mask mandation in July 2021. And then we came in with the, the mandates and you were, you didn't do the, the celebrity tailing off thing. I'm going to talk about something else now. I'm going to rebrand myself and forget about what I just tweeted. Uh, no, I don't think that that was the right thing to do. Um, uh, I, I, I was of the belief that I think it became quite clear to me that this government, um, under whose control they are, um, is anybody's guess, but I think there's a, there's a few people that probably stand out as main culprits. Um, but under this government, they were going to take away 
as many of our freedoms as we were going to allow them to. And I did not but want to be in that position. May 2022, we have all of our freedoms back. So is it time for you to go back to your old job? And start living life again <laughs> and enjoying yourself? Uh, well, that's a, that's a strange thing, you see, because um, obviously I, I, would, I would never go back to my old job for a start. I would never work for that company uh, ever again. Um, but I have found uh, different ways of, of earning a living. Um, uh, and uh, I, yes, we may have um, we may have our freedoms back at the moment. Um, but I, I think with some of the uh, stuff that's going through Parliament at the moment, uh, we still have to be on our guard against this government because they are still trying to uh, take away uh, freedoms, um, freedoms of protest. Um, uh, and also, uh, I think there's there's stuff going through Parliament that's just not quite realistic. You know, this WHO treaty that they're willing to hand over the entire country to the World Health Organization, who are primarily funded by uh, an individual bloke with no medical qualifications who seems to get a lot of time in the media to tell everyone, you know, what we should be doing about vaccines. This bloke's making a lot of money out of vaccines. Um, and I, I, I don't agree that we should, we had pandemic plans already in place uh, that, and they were thrown out the window because we decided to copy what China were doing. I mean, when in the world was there ever a sensible time when copying China was the right thing to do? And this media have cheered it on from day one and it made me sick. Well, didn't it all start with Professor Neil Ferguson, um, his yep. projection locked down the world, I think. But what I would like to know from you, Matt, if that's OK, is how have you got to this place in terms of who's inspired you? What have you watched? Because... Um, I'm imagining, I am going to guess, you've probably not been watching um, the, the BBC and reading The Guardian and The Times. I should imagine yeah. you've been seeing other information that's led you to the place you're in today. So who, who stands out to you in terms of inspiration or guidance in terms of what could really be going on? Um, I think early on... Um... Mike Eden was a was a big voice early on. Um, Iva Cummings, I was watching uh, Iva's presentations. Um, you know, there was there was some quite weighty professors, and uh, and I think the the red flag started. For Great me Barrington with, Declaration. Do you remember that? What did you think the of Great, them? Uh, absolutely, the Great Barrington Declaration. I think has also proved that it uh, it was probably the best way to go. Um, what they were describing, um, and. Slowly but surely, um, they are starting to be proved right. Those people that, that came out with um, the stuff that they were coming out with. Professor uh, John Ionidis um, came out very early on with what the uh, fatality rate uh, of, of this virus was, uh, was going to be. Uh, and it turns out he was you know, pretty bang on the money very early on in this. Uh, and yet those kind of guys, are, you know, a lot of those scientists that were anti the narrative um, started getting censored on social media. And I think that for me uh, sent up some big red flags where you had experts in their field uh, and they were having their tweets censored by some spotty. Well, it makes you more interested, doesn't it? It makes you more interested because you have, I think there was this spectrum of doctors to correct back D and the great Barrington declaration. And you have professor Dolores Carl and, uh, all the sorts of people. Dr. Mike Eden had a full page in the mail on October 2020. But do you think that you were just watching the people that had been censored? Were you focusing on those doctors and maybe ignoring other opinions? Did you get involved in a community that said, uh, we must be right because we're being ignored and silenced? Or did you try and spread out your... Did you, no, did I've you always, I've always tried, I've always tried to look at both sides of the story and evaluate um, both sides of the narrative before making up my mind. Um, uh, and I think that's very much the Libra in me. Uh, I like things to be fair, and I like things to be just. Uh, and I also think that people should be uh, allowed to hear both sides of the story and to make up their own minds once they've heard both sides. Um, uh, and I. And I vehemently disagree with only big it being given one 
narrative of, about the whole subject and being told this is how it is this is the way you're going to think about it and we're going to censor every other opinion about it and i think that's a that's not a world that i want to live in it's not a world i want to live in um i'm i'm shocked and i'm sure you've been shocked by how people that you respected and admired um allowed that censorship and that's all it was wasn't it there was no counter narrative there was no debate when it needed yeah. to take place and then but then you find yourself pushed into this community that actually that that says certain things that maybe you just you just wanted to hear that community it doesn't mean you're in that community do you know what i mean are you in no, that community i think you uh, see i i'm uh, I'm very much, I would consider myself to be um, a centrist, I guess I, I would be called, um, because there are certain sides of an argument on one side of the debate that I, I would agree with, and then a different story could be on the other side, and you're branded as right, a right-wing conspiracy theorist or a left-wing nutter. Um, and uh, I've never considered myself to be anything other than somebody who evaluates uh, the evidence in front of them uh, and makes a decision based on the evidence that he's seen. Um, and so I've never really been a, a political type person at all. Uh, I've had very little interest uh, in party politics. Uh, I think from a, from quite a young age, I realized that actually uh, a lot of those guys are, are in it for themselves or are not even in control of what they're doing. Uh, they've just been placed in positions because of where they went to school. Um, and so I didn't really take a lot of notice of it. Um, and it only kind of really started getting my back up when it then it started, uh, obviously, uh, having a big impact in what I was allowed to do and what I wasn't allowed to do in my life. Um, I mean, when you look back at some of the stuff that was going on, given what we know now, it was quite ludicrous, some of the rules that were there. Well, we are starting to see in 2022, um, reports from media organizations like the mail saying that uh, lockdown simply didn't work um masks didn't work but we're all a little bit i i don't know what you think we're all a little bit um traumatized too traumatized to go there and even discuss it i think we haven't processed this um, um, it's funny because the, the the mail will do things like that and they'll, they'll say lockdowns don't work and masks don't work uh, and they'll do articles on that and yet they'll still attack me uh, for being a um, an anti-lockdowner uh, and uh, anti-masker, uh, and yet everything that I I said uh, very early on in this was actually what they've just reported on, and yet they'll still call me a conspiracy theorist for peddling these fake ideas and misinformation and disinformation. Honestly, it just which is I, why I've tried to focus I, on I, interviews I, with people like you know former BBC presenter Sue Cook and uh, Mark Sharma, former ITV and Sky News executive who hired the likes of uh, Julie Etchingham, David Rose, who was at Mail on Sunday talking about ivermectin with Dr. Tess Lowry and Pierre Corey. So I've tried to work with people where they're at to, to try and reach those that have just literally chosen their media brand or their the person in their life or whatever they want to trust and listen to, to, to make sense of, of what's going on in their lives and the decisions they need to make in relation to their health. I, um, I, I could talk to you literally all day, Matt, but I really do want to bring this forward to 2022 and what's happened to ITV because I was, um, I worked at the Guernsey press and you're from Guernsey. It was the very first job I had in journalism um, what I do need to say about the Channel Islands is uh, when I started as a journalist there, uh, you didn't need to have any professional qualifications to be a journalist in the Channel Islands. And that still seems appears to be the case. Um, Guernsey Press, and then I ended up working for ITV. Uh, the editor at the time was Karen Rankin. I believe she's still there. I was at ITV in Jersey most of the time. Um, and we had a chat about a story that they that, that's that's occurred recently. Um, I know you're from Guernsey in the Channel Islands, and I spoke to a, a reporter at ITV, um, sorry, no, Jersey Evening Post. And again, he confirmed he had an English literature degree, but he hadn't done any professional qualifications in journalism. When in uh, the mainland, you do need that. Um, he said he had, yeah, he'd he'd done some in-house training. 
So I know that ITV in the Channel Islands and the Guernsey Press and the Jersey Evening Post, the journalists working there, are literally just people. Um, they have had some possibly some in-house training, but they aren't professional journalists. Um, and there was a particular incident that I found incredibly upsetting. And, and really, that's why I want to talk to you. That's one of the main reasons I want to talk to you about is what happened. So can you just describe to, to everyone listening what happened? Yeah, so I was booked to uh, speak at the Jersey Bulls, who are a, a, um, a volunteer-led organisation, football club, uh, only, only recently been formed. Um, and they had their end-of-season awards dinner booked for the 7th uh, of May. Uh, and they asked me uh, a few weeks ago if I would, if I would do my after-dinner speech uh, at, this, at this dinner, uh, which I was more than happy to do. So uh, I'd spoken with them um and you know sorted out flights and uh, all that stuff accommodation um they'd asked me if i would supply um an auction item uh, for the evening and given that i was staying over uh till the sunday evening uh, i suggested that um well, perhaps on the sunday if we could if i could have a game of golf i bring my golf clubs over and you could auction off the places to play golf with me on the sunday as, as an auction item just as something a little bit different um, so that's what I, I kind of agreed to do that for them. Uh, they thought that was a great idea and that it would raise you know, a decent amount of money for, uh, for their funds. So um, that was all honky dory. And uh, on, uh, I think it was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday before the Saturday um, of last week, I had a phone call from uh, one of the volunteers who I've been dealing with, who uh, you know, I'd agreed to do the dinner for. Uh, sounding very sheepish on the phone uh, when I saw his name come up um, uh, I thought mm, okay this could be interesting and sure enough um, it, was a, it was a little bit sheepish and he said yeah we've got we've got a bit of a problem with this Saturday um, obviously with with what's gone on he said the Jersey ITV Jersey have, um, have been on to us uh, and they've said that they were going to send cameras to the event um, and frame the event as a controversial uh, event. Um, and uh, he then told them, well, hang on, this is in a private, this is a hotel, a private function in a hotel. You, we're not going to let your cameras come into the room. Uh, and at this point, apparently ITV Jersey had said, well, we will have cameras filming the players as they go into the dinner, and we'll still be there when they come out of the dinner, filming them when they come out. And we will be framing it as a controversial event. Um, and so this televote. So well, isn't that, it isn't it a controversial speaker? I don't know how you feel about that label, but not a controversial event. Uh, well, I mean, my after dinner speech isn't controversial. I speak about my football career and my career uh, on Sky, uh, and that's all I speak about my after dinner speech. That, that that's what I do. Um, and so in no way shape or form is that controversial it's, i'm just telling stories from my life in football so um with that uh i had um during this conversation uh, i was <laughs> i was told that uh the guy that was hosting uh the dinner um he had he, he worked for itv jersey and he was hosting the dinner uh, but he had agreed to only host the dinner uh if he didn't have to share a stage with me. So he would never be on the stage at the same time as me. What's his uh, name? Uh, I don't know what his name was. Um, I, I mean, it would be easy to find out. I didn't care what his name was, um, quite so frankly. So this, this is a male who works at ITV in the Channel Islands, yeah? Where yes. I used to work, okay. Uh, who, then, uh, who then, I believe, actually um, did the same job hosting the, uh, the Guernsey FC uh, equivalent of the Jersey Bulls, the, the Guernsey FC dinner the following evening. You've um, got family in the Channel Islands, haven't you? I have. I've got a lot of family in Guernsey. Um, so uh, with that, um, I, I, you know, I, I said to the guy on the phone, I said, look, I said, I understand the position you're in. Uh, I think it's quite despicable what ITV Jersey are doing to you as a volunteer-led organisation. They, they shouldn't be doing that to you. Uh, but, you know, if that's the decision you've taken, then that's fine. I understand why you've taken that decision. You didn't. 
they actually took the decision because they didn't want any more controversy. They didn't want controversy. Um, however, by making that decision, they probably made it more controversial than it was ever going to be if uh, ITV Jersey just put a couple of cameras outside the uh, the hotel and filmed people going in. Um, but that was the decision they made. I would have preferred it if Jersey Bulls had been, you know, a little bit stronger and just said to just sent to ITV Jersey, well. Well, I'm sorry, but Matt just talked about football in his speech, so this isn't controversial. So you can do what do what you like. You can try and frame it however you want, but it's not controversial. No, 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 Matt. Matt, what we need to focus on here is what is controversial. And if you are cancelled from a, a sports event, you know, were you breaking the law? No, nope. no, not in any way, shape, or form. So, um, so the conversation, I would, you know. Well, uh, and what? And what? I'm um, sorry, on but... what grounds could that ever have been cancelled in your world, in my world, in a real world, in a sane world? On what grounds could that ever have been cancelled? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't ever have been cancelled. There's no reason to cancel it. Um, uh, and the only reason that it was cancelled was because so what, of what? New what if was... I wanted to talk to you, Matt, about what the hell, what's been going on over the last two years? Is that controversial? If I ha- held no. an event near to me and I, we had a paid event, ticketed events, and it would do well. Would that be controversial? Should that be cancelled by the um, by the venue? Uh, no, it shouldn't. Just like no. the uh, just like the conference uh, in Bath in a couple of weeks' time. Um, uh, but we that, that's so we complete... can't even talk about the the hell we went through. Yeah, that that's controversy, is it? Oh, well, apparently it it could be framed that way. I mean, we know how the media works; they can frame anything the way they want it. They can make the most angelic the person. old media. Yeah, the old could... media. And Absolutely. let's remember, let's remember how many views is that, you know, you did share an eloquent, um, very well, uh, well, I don't know if you've got PR or um, an agent, oh, but you put together, a, 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 as a gentleman, <laughs> you put together a, a, a video that went on Twitter. How many views did you get? Uh, it had over half a million views, I think. Okay. How many views do ITV Channel TV, you go. Um, I, I would imagine a lot less than that. Well, how many people live in Jersey? 100,000? Just over 100,000, I think, yeah. So who's the media? Well, I mean, you, you! Can, you can take control of your own media, and that's what I've tried to do. Um, you know, and that's why I did the video. Uh, I think it's important to get um, my version of events out there as opposed to um, the version of events that... Uh, ITB Jersey. I mean, they had they had the damn cheek to tweet uh, to tweet out that I'd been uh, cancelled from the uh, Jersey Bulls dinner uh, after a backlash from the fans. Um, no, I wasn't. I was cancelled from the dinner because of what ITB Jersey threatened the Jersey Bulls with. Uh, the only the I only was, thing that matters here is is that we care that about the ITV bit because we've grown up I was born in 1976 ITV meant something if they want to trash their brands if they want to do this let them get on with it they are they are Matt you are huge I I huge you are absolutely huge if I ever tweet about you or share you you have a massive following and you have so much love you are the future and that's what, if anything, I just want everyone to understand. This is the new media. Matt Letizia, you are the future. Um, well, I think, I think one of the good things about, you know, there's, there's a lot of bad things about social media, but one of the good things about it is you, I can do a video and I can tell everybody what has just happened to me. Um, and people can go and check. And if I, was, if I was lying, if I was lying about it, why haven't ITV Jersey sued me? Well, because you can't, I believe, and I may be wrong, but I am a a trained journalist and I work for the National Union of Journalists. You can't defame an an organisation. You can only defame an individual. No, but why, why why have they not come after me? Because you haven't defamed an individual. Well, I mean, I could, I could, I could start and then see what they did. I could name the, I could name the, I could find out the name of the, the guy who uh, refused to go on the stage with me. But do you know what? Find that, out that, the Alan Partridge of Jersey. Come on, really find out. 
that that really doesn't that doesn't bother me um, quite frankly. Um, Isn't it interesting? Because you have these wars, you get really angry, and you just want to fight someone. Argh. But then actually, you need to look at the future. I can see you. You're in a very similar position to me, where you're you get really angry with these stupid idiots around you with ugh, stupid <laughs> small issues, and you just want to focus on the really important stuff, which is your values. And a tweet yeah. that I, I put out today, which you did with James English, you know, about um, having the right to to have an opinion. You know, your voice is your voice is your your biggest asset and it's growing and it's getting more and more powerful. And I champion that, Matt. I really do. The focus that you have. But on, I, I, yeah, um, I think it, I think it's I think what's it, what's important for me um, is we should have. Um, uh, in this in this life, we should have be able to have an atmosphere where you're allowed to question things, uh, and I say that um, not in a not in a contradictory way, but in a way that is respectful. I've tried to be respectful in a lot of the stuff that I've done, um, and questioning people as to decisions that were made. Uh, and I think it's important that you instil in your children. Um, not to not to just respect somebody just because they're older than you. People have to earn your respect. Uh, and there's a lot of people who have been in a lot of positions of power who have um, really taken advantage of people who just respect them for what they were. Um, and I don't want I don't want people not to be able to question things if they don't feel it's right. If there's something in your heart, in your gut, that tells you, actually, this doesn't really feel right. I need to do, I need to question this. What, what is going on here? And if it doesn't feel right to you, do not do it. Who, you know, my dad's a big inspiration to me. And um, when I talk to people like you, I see glimpses of him um, he's got Alzheimer's now, but it's it's a very powerful force that I feel, this kind of love and care um, and justice. But what does it feel like um, when your wife or you wake up to a headline article in the Sun or the Mail putting you down and then you go on Twitter and get half a million views? Do you realise that you are powerful to fight back? Um, I, I know that I've got a voice uh, to be able to fight back and a platform to be able to fight back. Um, so I don't really have an awful lot of respect for the old media. Um, so they can basically write what they want about me and it doesn't bother me one bit, quite frankly. It bothers the people around me more than it bothers me. Um, I, I think I, I tweeted something uh, recently where I said the opinions... Of, uh, of morally corrupt individuals have no bearing on my life whatsoever. And I meant that with every fibre of my being. Well, finally, I, I work with these people and I like them. I actually we had a really great time. <laughs> I, I know people in um, ITV, in the Channel Islands, Oxford, Birmingham, uh, BBC South Today. I, I had a really good laugh. And I know you had a really good laugh, didn't you, when you were at Sky? No, I, you- I had a great I had a great time. And I'm not... I'm, and, yeah, let me put this in perspective, um, because you kind of bunch together a whole load of people when you talk about the old media. It isn't everybody. It isn't everybody. There are some good people in in all walks of life, in all organisations. Uh, unfortunately, um, they tend to get drowned out uh, by the, the the loud and not so good people uh, who have an influence over them. Um, and so, it's important to distinguish when when. I criticise the the old media. I, that's not. I'm not telling everybody in the old media that they're not a very nice person and they're morally no. corrupt. Oh. Uh, I'm talking about the people that have attacked me for my views uh, over the last couple of years. Well, let's hope we can encourage and inspire them to to do what you've done, which is is follow those in really important principles and values, um, which is about being able to say. Have a conversation, have a debate, and voice your um, your important. You know, if something's important to you. You want to talk about it. You should be able to talk about it. Yeah, Seems no, absolutely. I think that's that's one of the biggest things for, from the last couple of years that has really annoyed me more than anything is the lack of the lack of debate 
uh, and the, the lack of uh, the the opposing voice uh, being allowed to be heard, the censorship um, is just it's just frightening for me. Uh, I didn't think that the country that I live in and the country that I love, I didn't think it would ever go down that route. And unfortunately, um, it hasn't gone away. Looking at what happened to you in ITV in the Channel Islands, you know, it wasn't a brief period in our history, was it? It's uh, nope. it's still here. Well, listen, Matt, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I, and I really appreciate you you, you talking to numerous um, new media platforms to get this important message out. And uh, I hope people really do listen to this and um, share it. I hope they share it. I hope they share well, it. Let's hope so. I've been trying to... Um to, to, to try and get to as many people as I can by doing as many interviews as I can. Um, but it's also important to, to you know, make sure you've got a bit of balance in your life. Uh, and probably, you know, during lock, the first lockdown especially, um, you kind of become, because there wasn't a lot to do, you kind of become obsessed with, with, with kind of looking for inf information and, and going on um, all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of places. And you kind of get, so you, it's important that I've had to make sure uh, that I've got a balance in my life where I do a, a lot of interviews and I talk about a lot of this stuff, but I also have to have a balance where I make sure that I still have time in my life to have fun. Um, That's what I need to do. That's exactly what I need to do. I know what you mean. It's yeah. like you, 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 t you know, uh, you work nine to five, or whatever, and at five o'clock, turn it all off, and uh, go in the garden, have fun with the kids, listen to music, have a nice yeah. meal, and Absolutely. that's it. You have to, or you go mad. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. No, a bit of balance in life, and uh, and that's that's what that's what me being a leader. Well, thank you for all. doing this. Well, it's, it's very quarter past five, so clock off. Go and have some fun. <laughs> um, oh, really lovely yeah. to talk to you. And um, oh gosh, I've been waiting to talk to you for so long. I've been waiting to talk to you so long, uh, Matt. And um, God bless you all, and you and no your, your, your wonderful you, family. All the best. Yeah, Bye.